All right, man, peace. So now this is going to be part two pertaining to the disintegration of the relationship between LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And when I say the Cleveland Cavaliers, I don't just mean the organization. I also mean the rest of his teammates. So now let's see what they have to say. We're joined now by Fox Sports Radio host Doug Gottlieb and the founder of the big league, Jason McIntyre. Let's move to Orlando. Where the Cavaliers lost in embarrassing fashion yet again. That's hard. This time blowing a 21-point lead and losing by 18 to the Orlando that Magic. Harsh. It was pretty bad. Cleveland has pretty much been in free fall since Christmas, and Isaiah Thomas was blunt about their struggles after the game. Right now, we, when we hit adversity, we go our separate ways. And that's just... That's just how I feel, and, and it looks like that as well. And guys start to go one on one offense, and then defense is every man for itself. First half, we. Well, Isaiah, <laughs> unfortunately, on defense, we can't even say every man for itself because you don't guard anybody. It's basically five on four. And then if you count LeBron, it's like five on three and a half because he's only playing 50% on defense. I mean, look, the thing is with Isaiah Thomas is he feels like he has nothing to lose. Because the worst that can happen to him is that he gets traded. And if he gets traded, he's happy because that means that he gets to leave that environment. He is obviously very unhappy to be there. He does not seem to like anyone on the team. <laughs> he doesn't even seem to like the coaches. So that pretty much has, has given him free reign to speak his mind and most likely also act as an informant to Dan Gilbert. We play good. Everybody was happy. We was energized. Helping each other on the defensive end. Well, Lord knows you need a lot of help. Sharing the ball. The ball is moving side to side on offense. And then we revert back to what makes us lose games. Yeah. yeah. Play you. Put you on the court. That's what's making y'all lose games. Cavaliers are trash, Calher. <laughs> yes, I agree. Trash. Absolute trash with a capital T. Starting with LeBron. Is that trash? trash. Trash. Does this diminish LeBron's legacy? In no. Way? First of all, do you remember Pippen's Houston years, or Favre with the Jets, or MJ with the Wizards? Well, the difference is that in those three situations, all those players that you're speaking about were about 38 years old and upward. LeBron James is supposed to be in his prime still. He's supposed to be better than Michael Jordan. That's what we're. That's what we're told incessantly. When I say we, I'm speaking about the people who follow the sports world to whatever degree you choose to follow it. LeBron James is a name that everyone is inundated with. So, of course, the expectations would be that he would not be the captain or the commander of a team that would be giving up on the season, possibly with him leading the way in regards to giving up. We don't remember Tragic Johnson, which he was for a year. We celebrate that we remember Favre with the Vikings for an hour well, the thing with the Tragic Johnson stuff is that that happened to Magic after he'd already won two championships. He lost the one in 84, but he was only 24 years old. It wasn't like he was 33, 32, and expected to be the mature leader of the team. He was not really the leader of that team. He was a co-leader. Uh, that 1984 Lakers team was a team that was in the midst of a transition from the leadership of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know, which was more silent and stoic. And also the leadership of players like Jamal Wilkes and the uh, the players of the early 80s like Bob McAdoo and Norm Nixon over to the newer players that were just coming in like James Worthy and Byron Scott after they had removed Norm Nixon and some of those older players. So there's there's a lot that went into why the 84 Lakers lost. In 85, they were able to uh, truly understand who they are a little bit better. And that's one of the reasons why they slowly started to transition over to being Magic Johnson's team. But the Tragic Johnson stuff, there was a lot that went into that. Either way, just to get back to the point, the comparison really does not pertain to LeBron James because he's 33 years old. He's supposed to be in the fullness of his, of his career right now. Physically and mentally, this is the time period where there's supposed to be some form of a synchronicity there. And the Packers for years. We're not going to remember this. It's January. I'm remember. It's the lost year. I'm going to remember it. I, it? It's not going to be the lost year. I'm going to find it. Just like in 2011, they love to make you think that that was the lost finals. No, I found it. 
I saw LeBron James average about 13 points a game in the 2011 finals. <laughs> and I'm sure somebody's going to jump in the comments. It was 17 a game, not 13 a game. Nigga, why you always hating on LeBron? You always hate you. I, I remember. You know what I'm going to remember? What? I was, I was watching Undisputed this morning. Skip Bayless said something. My head exploded. Head exploded. Well, that's saying a lot. I figured if anything was going to explode on you, it'd be your damn stomach. Since Christmas, LeBron James has the worst plus minus in the league. Everybody in the league. I'm not surprised about that. People have to understand something about the plus minus. Yes, it, it certainly is meant to denote who's, who's the most effective player on the floor. But when you have players who play more minutes, they're always going to lead the league in plus minus, either for or against. Because they're the ones who are going to determine the flow of the game the most. So yes, LeBron James is leading the league on the negative side in plus minus. Not only is that an indicator of the fact that he's not playing well and the team is not playing well, but also that he's one of the, the, the league leaders in minutes. So you would expect that. You do have to skew that. So when you say, well, he's leading everybody, well, of course he's going to lead you know, the, 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 pl the person who doesn't even get off the end of the bench. You would expect that because that, that stat is, is cumulative as well as, being, uh, as well as being indicative of a player's impact on the floor. So uh, I can definitely see its relevance and its pertinence, but you, you do have to put it in proper context. The last man on a team is never going to be a factor in plus minus in regards to who's leading the league in plus minus. And you don't think I'm going to remember that? You, did Michael Jordan ever? Did Magic Johnson ever? Larry Bird ever? No, no, and no. And that's why all three of those players are above him on my list. The worst plus minus in the league. That's intentional. <laughs> Look at Cowherd face. He didn't even know what to say. It, it might be intentional. It might be intentional. Uh, as I've already stated... It's very obvious to me that LeBron James is content to make sure that when he leaves the Cleveland Cavaliers that they're a house burning down. His mentality is that you didn't want to help me, so now I'm going to, not, not only am I not going to help you in regards to requesting a trade, but whatever happens here is what happens. You have me here playing with these bums, so I'm going to become a bum. But I'm just going to make sure that I get my numbers in the process. And that will come out as more people report on That's it. I agree with that. I, I think that a lot of things are going to come out in the aftermath of this. Especially if Kevin Love gets traded. That man might write a book. It's intentional. That's not by accident. That's not some fluke in the stats. That's a man that wants this team to be trash. He's sabotaging his own team. And hell yeah, it diminishes his legacy. Go ahead, Whitlock. Tell him how you really feel. God damn. <laughs> I, I, first of all, Isaiah oh. Thomas actually was dead on accurate with his assessment of the team. They were playing really, really well. And I flipped the channel. And then I turned back and I said, what was going on? And then they started playing ISO ball and very selfishly. The crazy thing about it is he's the only one speaking the truth in the room but because he doesn't have the sweat equity with everybody else. Are you a lot of that's also because they probably got up to a fast start and then LeBron James said, okay, we're out by 20. Now it's time to get my stats. Dodge. Huh? We got a question on the tape. We'll answer well, look, diminishes legacy. I, I do think in the short term it does, but in the long term it does not. Because I agree with that as well. For this year, people are going to look at LeBron and they're going to start to grade him in a little bit better context. But in the long run, especially if he's able to get a couple of more championships later on in his career on another team, a lot of that madness about whether or not he's as good as Jordan is going to pop back up again. But those of us who remember and can gauge his entire career He'll be evaluated properly by certain people. Because here's what happens. When he left Cleveland last time, they were terrible. When he left Miami, they were terrible. When he leaves this team, they'll be terrible. And yet he'll have been to all these NBA finals. What's the argument against Michael Jordan as opposed to LeBron James? It's that when he left and he goes and plays baseball, they go to the Eastern Conference Finals anyway, right? Yeah, that's the argument that's utilized by a lot of idiots who don't really understand what was occurring during that time period, people who did not see that era. Once again, the reason why the Bulls were able to win, even after Jordan retired in 93, was because they brought in a certain, a certain crop of incoming players 
who were serviceable and who were willing to perform their role and who could spell many of the starters on that team who had gotten the championship experience through Jordan. The 93-94 Bulls, they brought in Ku Coach and Luke Longley and Steve Kerr and many of the players who would become more known on the second 3 P team to combine with many of the more known role players from the first 3 P team. That being B.J. Armstrong and Horace Grant, of course, Scotty leading the team with Bill Cartwright, John Paxson, etc. Had Jordan not retired, that probably would have been their best team. The 94 team would have probably been their best team because it would have been their deepest team. But you know what's so funny? Everybody talks about how well they played the year after Jordan retired. But nobody talks about the fact that in 94-95, the year after the year that Jordan retired, they were barely... They were barely in the playoff hunt. They were around the 5th or 6th seed. They were floating around 500. And then Jordan comes back and not even in game shape. They go 13-4. and four And they're able to get to the second round. After which they got beat by the Orlando Magic. A precocious team that was probably the most talented team to never win the championship. And then of course the Bulls win three more championships. Jordan retires again. And then the Bulls fall off the map. But nobody mentions that because it doesn't fit the narrative. You understand? It doesn't fit the narrative. The 93-94 Bulls fit the narrative better than the 98-99 Bulls. <laughs> and I always say this, and brothers who remember that year will attest to it. The 97-98 Bulls got off to a very bad start. They were something like 7-8 and eight, or 8-9, eight and nine, something like that. And Scottie Pippen was injured. He couldn't play. And he was running his mouth talking about how he was going to sit out the whole season he was going to demand a trade because he hadn't gotten the respect that he deserved from the Bulls uh, upper management. And then, of course, Jordan got the ship, you know, righted. They started to win and they had gotten to something like 15 games or 16 games over 500. And then suddenly Pippen rushed to come back into the lineup. Why is that? Because he was losing value as a free agent. The more the Bulls won, the more it looked like they didn't need him. Because Jordan was winning games with Kukoc and Dennis Rodman and those guys. So that's what I mean when I say you have to understand history in the proper context. Uh, to make a long story short, LeBron is a great player. Uh, Kobe's a great player. Tim Duncan is a great player. But their exploits have to be evaluated in proper context. Now, I will say this about the 93-94 Bulls. And many people come on YouTube and like to talk about rigging and this and that. That series that they had in the second round against the Knicks, that call that Hugh Hollins called on Scottie Pippen, was certainly very, very uh, f fuzzy, to say the least. That was definitely not a foul that was called on Scotty against Hubert Davis, I believe it was. I bl and I think that it was in Game 5 of the semifinals. But it is what it is. It happens. And Hugh Hollins has always had it out for the Chicago Bulls. Even when Jordan was there, Hugh Hollins had it out for the Bulls. Right? So I think long term, people have a short term memory, Jason. They do. You're right, but they will forget about it. Uh, let me, I'm sorry. I'll go. Pri uh, go let, me, let me take it. Whitlock, very prisoner of the moment. Though. Yeah. Okay? Since Christmas, we're talking about a seven week stretch, and you're talking about his legacy? Hold on. Seven Jason, weeks. Jason, he said the worst in the league. That I, is I a get strong that. That's step. bad. <laughs> you're understanding. See, this is the problem, right? Bo Botley. Worse than Bo Whitlock. <laughs> they're all wrapped up in social media and being a prisoner of the moment right now. Last night, you go on social media. Oh my gosh. Orlando crushed the Cavs. Do you guys remember any Michael Jordan losses when he came back from baseball? First of all, Do you remember any at all? Jason. You? Well, many of the LeBron James super fans talk about how the Bulls lost to the Orlando Magic in 95. So they do bring that to people's memory. Deal with what I said. I didn't talk about their loss last night. I talked about a man that's going to have on his jacket the worst plus minus since Christmas of anybody in the league and you're comparing it to Michael Jordan? No one remembers I, Michael where, Jordan. Hold on, wait, come, wait, 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 come, come, That is going on the back of his jacket. You know what's on the front? Down 3-1 against the greatest regular season team in NBA history. And then the NBA bailed him out. They suspended Draymond Green. And then fortunately for him, uh, Andre Iguodala's back locked up. Andrew Bogut got a torn up knee. Uh, Steph Curry got, <laughs> got his chip switched off and also had a debilitating knee injury that cropped up throughout the playoffs and he was able to take advantage of it because Kyrie Irving hit the game winning shot in game seven that's what's going to be remembered about that series once again LeBron is the Wilt Chamberlain of the modern day era freakish physical specimen 
but did not have the wrinkles that many other greats had. If you don't think about Will Chamberlain, he was known for being quirky, especially in pressure situations. And he brings him back in as a triple double in Game Seven. And your win your the bigger fight. point, which Come is on. I didn't think about it, but uh, it, it's interesting that he's sabotaging the year. Yes. Thank you. Now, 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 I would generally not buy into that conspiratorial nature. That's not my nature. Okay, <laughs> I go home to a loving family. <laughs> you you go home to these crazy ideas. Yeah. You are you can be that way. That are right sometimes. But I will tell you this. Um, I from a source I trust was told today that the Gilbert LeBron relationship is awful. I mean, it's like pass just... in the hall and so don't you, look so at you, each other. So you... Of course it's awful because Dan Gilbert made him look bad when it was revealed that the reason why they traded Kyrie was because LeBron did not want to agree to sign an extension. In LeBron's mind, that was Dan Gilbert's way of trying to win in the court of public approval by putting the onus on LeBron James as being the reason why Kyrie left. And in, all, and in all reality, LeBron is the reason why Kyrie left because Kyrie did not want to play with him anymore. He was tired of LeBron's emotional mood swings, his uh, capricious nature. Kyrie didn't want to deal with that anymore. And I don't blame him. And LeBron had the opportunity to force the Cavaliers to not trade him by signing an extension. He chose not to do so, and that's fully within his right. But now he must suffer the consequences just as anyone does when they're given the power to exert control over other people. It is what it is. And LeBron knows damn well that he was thinking about signing that extension if they were able to pull off the trade for Eric Bledsoe and Paul George. But he didn't want to do that. So it all ended up how it was supposed to end up in the long run. That's all that matters. So you believe what I'm just saying. saying what you're saying is... LeBron's like, listen, bro, I'm going to make this painful for you. And I do believe the but, guy's got a basketball intellect. And so when he checks into a game, I'm talking about last night's game. There was a game a couple weeks ago. They were up 16 points or something in the fourth quarter. He checks in and they magically lose the game. That, 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 yeah, because he was coming back in and get his stats. That, that doesn't make sense. It goes against, it goes yeah, against what right. you normally think. LeBron yeah. comes in and you have a lead. You First should win. Game. Yeah. No, look. But look, he's done this before. He did the last time he was on his way out. Only it was one Thank game, you. right? Intentional. Uh, look, I okay. but but okay. I look at the, I know the real Kobe Bryant, the one that took twenty six shots in Game Seven, and Ron Artest had to bail him out. Thank you, sir. Yes, Game Seven against the Boston Celtics, the man was horrific. Um, he threw up more bricks than the damn construction worker. Fortunately for him, crazy ass Metal World Peace saved him and saved his legacy. Because had he lost to Boston at home, his, his entire career history would have looked different. He would have been the guy who led the Lakers to one championship against the Orlando Magic. And rode Shaq's coattails to three more. Now he gets to be the guy who won five titles. And he was an equal partner to Shaq. Even though Shaq won all three finals MVPs in those first three, se in those first three championship seasons. That's how much a performance in one finals can change how your career is viewed look at lebron if ray allen does not hit that corner three he's he's a guy with two championships right he beat a precocious oklahoma city team and he was able to come back from down 3-1 on a golden state team that outran everybody for 98 percent of the race and then the last two percent of the race they caught cramps that's what happened to golden state uh, but that's the same kobe bryant who quit on his team Right? We've seen Kobe. Absolutely. He quit against the Phoenix Suns when they when they gave up a 3-1 lead. It's funny. All the super Laker fans, they don't mention that. Kobe quit on his team. LeBron quit on his team. But for whatever reason, when these guys retire, you talked about legacy. And this is all time. For whatever reason, they become Teflon because of the number of rings and points that they've scored. Here's and also, it, it doesn't benefit the NBA to talk about their athletes, warts and all. They're gods, meaning they're Hall of Famers. It doesn't behoove the NBA as a business to view a Tim Duncan or a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant with the light um, illuminating every wrinkle on that face. How does that help them? You want to glorify your gods, your idols. That's just how it goes. Nobody, nobody really wants to have it revealed 
what many of these athletes are like behind closed doors or how they conduct themselves or certain theatrics that they went through or took their team through in the locker room. It doesn't help anybody. Here's what I'm talking about, though, Doug. Again, I'm not talking about like, oh, my God, we're going to lose all respect for LeBron. I'm going to what I'm talking about is don't put his name in the same sentence with Michael Jordan. Thank you, sir. I totally agree. Because Michael Jordan would never have done this. Absolutely. And, and, and again, what he'll run into jeopardy of is someone like me will say, well, hold on, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson would never have done this, too. Right. Thank you, sir. We'll lock you on a roll, brother. Good job, man. Once again, my top 10 NBA players, number one, Michael Jordan, number two, Kareem, number three, Bill Russell, number four, Magic, number five, Larry Bird, number six, LeBron. And once again, I think you could throw Magic, Larry, and LeBron in a hat or in a bag, shake it all up, whoever you pull out of that, that bag you pull out. But I would take Magic and Larry over LeBron. That's just me. Correct. I'm gonna back. I'm gonna back LeBron up instead of being number two or three or four. I'm gonna back him up to six or seven. That's all I'm saying. I'm so, not. So saying. Kevin Love gets hurt. He's out. We can't blame him. We can't make him the punching bag. Yeah, let's go after LeBron. He's okay. been bad for seven weeks. Isaiah oh, has been bad. Well, you have to go after LeBron because had they been winning, you would be glorifying him. So conversely, when they're not winning, you have to go after him and castigate him. That's how it works. LeBron is a big boy. He could take it, and he loves the attention. He doesn't care. He's been terrible. The worst plus minus. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. wait. And listen, the whole argument was an awful month for the him. The whole head. argument for LeBron James is, hey, he scores, but he's not a scorer. His team always wins. His team. Thank you, sir. I, I get so sick of tying that bullshit. LeBron with his pretentious ass gets behind the microphone. I can't believe I scored thirty thousand points. I'm not even a scorer. Dude, you're a scorer. You scored thirty thousand points. I, I, I much prefer to see my teammates score. If you much prefer to see your teammates score, you would have averaged double-digit assists at least one season. You've never even come close. This is the most assist that you've ever averaged in a season right now. I believe he's somewhere around eight, eight and a half. You've never even averaged double digits in assists, but you love seeing your teammates score so much. It would have made more sense if you were somebody like a, a John Wall or a Rajon Rondo to say something like that. No, you're a jack of all trades, and, and that's part of your appeal. That's part of your greatness, that you do so many things well. But don't say that you're not a scorer, because quite frankly, scoring is what LeBron does best. Team always, nothing embodies... Oldest roster in the league. Nothing embodies that. Kyrie. Those are guys that he LeBron. picked. Okay? It's unacceptable. What is plus minus four? <laughs> plus minus, is your team better or worse when you're in the game? Isaiah but Thomas, has, that's his fault, right? He it. has the worst in the league. Worse than Isaiah Thomas. All right, well, with... Said he got worse. He got a worse plus minus than Emmanuel Lewis, aka Isaiah Thomas. But anyway. Well, with the Cavs in disarray and the trade deadline just 24 hours away, speculation's been heating up that LeBron could waive his no trade clause and force his way out of Cleveland. But after yesterday's game, LeBron said he's not even thinking about it. No, I'm not a. Listen, I'm here for the long haul. You know, I'm here for this season right now. To try to you know figure out ways we can still compete. That's not the long haul. That's the LeBron haul. You're there for yourself so that Dan Gilbert won't get anything for trading you. Let's be for real, brother. Yeah, um, I couldn't give up on my teammates like that. I couldn't do that. That's um, I just couldn't do it. And I owe it to my teammates to, uh, to to finish the season out, no matter how it ends up. So, you no, know, I would never waive my no trade clause. All right, Whitlock, been a lot of drama in that locker room. Are you, uh, are you buying LeBron is actually devoted to his teammate? No, because he is doing it. He's, to, he's not giving them a fair effort. Tyron Lue said it weeks ago about agendas, and he wasn't just talking about Isaiah Thomas. He was talking about LeBron James. Absolutely. I didn't even know if he was talking about Isaiah Thomas at all. He very well may have been, but he certainly was talking about LeBron. And LeBron knew that he was talking about him, too. That's why he looked at the reporter who brought it to his attention sheepishly, and he said, well, I know I don't have any agendas, so, uh. <laughs> and so, look, look, I, I want to be clear on this. about LeBron James, like every other human being, flawed, and has moments, a week, a day, hours, months, where they do a lot of petty things, and it doesn't, 
you know, he's got a 34 year life to examine, not just these seven weeks. But in these seven weeks, I think he's been selfish. I think he hasn't cared a damn about his teammates. I think he's exercising a personal agenda of revenge against Dan Gilbert. And that takes precedent over doing what's best for this team. That's what I've seen in this seven week stretch. I think that LeBron James is a, is a, is a brother who means well. But he's never been taught about about administering. And those are things that you learn when you've had a strong male figure, and I mean a father in your life. This is why I give LeBron credit, and I have certain people come on my channel, oh, well, do you like LeBron or not? Dude, my channel is not about liking or disliking. And that's where a lot of cats, with all that female energy that many so-called black males have, unfortunately, this is where a lot of things get lost in translation. When I give assessments of people, it's never personal. I can't give a personal assessment unless I know you personally. All I can do is communicate what I see. And LeBron James is a, you know, he's very indicative and symptomatic of many of the issues in the so-called black community. He wants to be a leader, but he doesn't really know how to be a leader because he does not know how to establish proper conduct within himself that will you know, that will encourage his teammates to follow after him. That's why, he to, that's why he had to go down to Miami in the first place to team up with Dwayne Wade so that they could put their heads together and figure out how to lead. But the true leader of that Miami Heat team was Pat Riley. Quiet is kept. Because Eric Spolster was basically just a representative for Pat Riley. That's why LeBron had to get out of there because he couldn't deal with male authoritative energy. He had to be somewhere where he felt like he can call the shots and promote a lot of the, that female energy that's within him that he got from his chaotic mother. He can do that in Cleveland. That's why Kyrie wanted out. Because Kyrie was, ra was raised in a home that was dominated by male energy. So Kyrie can't deal with all that. He can't deal with that chaos and that havoc. So in LeBron's mind, he truly believes that he's being supportive of his teammates to a certain degree. That's why I call him delusional. But there is a certain portion of his mind, his mental framework, I have little doubt, that knows that what he's doing is truly self-serving. Because if he was not trying to be self-serving, he would waive his no-trade clause and he would leave the team if he was truly looking for a way to win championships, as he claims that he is. Because for him to say that, that he's there for the long haul, if you were truly there for the long haul, you would have signed the extension already, bro. Let's be for real. You're not there for the long haul, you're only there for the rest of the season. And then you're most likely going to leave. Now, if he re-ups with Cleveland at the end of the season, then I'll be proven wrong. But I doubt it. So we'll see. But again, he's had a much longer career, and we'll judge all of it. But in this seven-week stretch, and I think for the rest of this season, I haven't liked this LeBron James. Well, I, I, I would say this, is that someday we're going to look at this whole thing, and the big mistake's going to be he went home again. And it made no sense. He left Pat Riley, Aqua Water. He Don't left Mickey Harrison. No, sir. One day you're going to look back at LeBron James's move to Cleveland and you're going to understand that it was the perfect career decision for him because it was based in business. It was based in commerce. As I've already stated, the reason why he went back to Cleveland, in my view, was to re-ingratiate himself with that Midwest demographic. Now imagine if he had spent the remainder of his career in Miami and then 10 years down the line, he wants to buy a team. Do you think that Mickey Arison is going to sell him the Miami Heat? Absolutely not. That team belongs to Dwayne Wade. That is Wade County. He knew that he had to go back to Cleveland, finish what he started, get a championship there, so that he could establish some form of, of a tone or precedent for him to come back later on down the line and reclaim his throne, his proverbial throne as the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I have little doubt in my mind that it was a move that was made to precipitate things that are going to occur 20 years from now, 25 years from now, assuming that this society is still around in 25 years. And he, he couldn't get along with it. Yeah, he, Pat Labrelli wasn't going to let him have all his guys. Well, that, that's kind of what the Phil Jackson kind of outed him as he has to have it his way. And he couldn't have it his way. And so he went to somewhere where he could. Exactly. He had a daddy figure tell him no. That's why I stated Pat Riley was the, was the true leader of that Miami Heat team. 
LeBron can deal with that pressure of having that masculine energy coming down on him and holding him accountable and telling him no. He couldn't deal with that. He was too used to growing up in a house with his mother while she's running around doing drugs and sucking random rods and breaking into people's house. He's being raised on basketball and AAU coaches that are giving him whatever he wants and providing a little bit of stability, but not what a real father brings, which is discipline. Listen, all superstars put themselves number one. They all do. Yeah, but they don't put their friends ahead of everybody I don't else think as well. Tom Brady has. I don't think that's his record. I don't think that's well. But the NFL tends to be more coach shield. The NBA is about. I mean, I Golden State. Isaiah how Thomas about this? How about this? Steve Kerr comes out Saturday. He says my team is fried. Oh, 19 months together, best record in the league. They're fried. Is it possible 14 years of being the spotlight of the league? LeBron's fried. No, you cannot synchronize him with Golden State because Golden State has been the epitome of success for the last three years. Now one can say, well, LeBron James has also reached the finals. You can say that as well, but Golden State has a reason to be fried this year. They still have the best record in the NBA. They are expected every season coming into the season to win anywhere from 67 games and up. No one expects the Cleveland Cavaliers to even win 60 games, and and they supposedly have the best player in the NBA. So what is he fried for? He, he didn't win the championship last year. He should be galvanized. The Golden State Warriors won the championship last year. They actually have a reason to be bored by the regular season. What is his reason? They lost their allegedly second best player, Kyrie Irving. They brought in a new staff, a new roster of, of players. He's supposed to be totally focused and pinpointed on this season. The first two months, he was having the best offensive season of his career. Even I acknowledge that. And now he's totally fallen off. So what, what, what is the excuse? He is done emotionally. Steve Kerr says, my guys are, they're, they're, they've been together an hour and a half. It's the best team in the league and they're fried. What if LeBron's fried? He's fried emotionally. He's angry. He's burnt out. He's tired. He's bored. You sound like his therapist. Bored. Isn't that reasonable? No, it's not reasonable, sir not reasonable for a guy who claims that he wants to catch Michael Jordan those are his words he's chasing that ghost those are his words so you have to measure your observations by his words he's the one who came into the season saying that he was in the best shape of his career and then when they started off slow he said we're not in shape (laughs) that's LeBron James 101 it's it's a possibility Uh no it's not uh, 14 years you're yes. getting humiliated by a team like the Orlando Magic, okay? This is not just the Houston Rockets coming in and beating you. You're getting humiliated. Like, the only thing worse than the land, right, of the land uniforms, those uniforms are awful. Um, no, they're not gray, they're, that's not their colors, and it's not the land. You're off on a tangent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point. Is, is the fact that they're getting embarrassed by bad teams, and no one wants to get embarrassed. Well, maybe they're just getting embarrassed by teams that are on their level. After you've been bad long enough, it's not that you're getting embarrassed by bad teams, it's that you are a bad team. I agree with Jason that there is some sort of personal agenda. He's trying to make a point here, and it's hurting his team. And look, LeBron's one of those guys that is selfish in an unselfish manner. He he wants you to succeed, but he wants to help you succeed. He wants you to make the game-winning shot, but he wants to make the pass to the game-winning shot. He's one of the most unselfish selfish players maybe the most unselfish selfish player we've ever seen and he wants to be the guy who fixes this thing as well he will crank it up they will start playing better i don't think they'll ever get to the level that lebron's teams have in the past but i I, look i look at this thing and i do think lebron is a bad teammate because he's trying to control and manipulate the situation well he's a bad teammate because he doesn't want to acknowledge that he wants to be the puppet master And that shows that he's truly embarrassed about what his real motivations are. If what you were doing was on the up and up, you wouldn't be so embarrassed about what you're doing. Like, don't act like you have no say on player personnel and who the coach is and the system that's being ran. Don't say that you don't when you do. The reason why you're saying that you don't is because you don't want to be held accountable when things don't go well. That's part of the problem when you're running the LeBron James system. You have to take it for what it's worth. 
and it's working. Oh my goodness, this is beat up on LeBron Day, no isn't it? Kidding. I mean, geez, let's kill LeBron James. Guys, let's I said this a couple weeks ago. Go ahead. He's worrying about things he can control with. Like, he can't control the roster. He didn't trade Kyrie Irving. He didn't bring in these old guys who can't defend. Uh, yes, actually, he did get Kyrie Irving traded. He got Kyrie Irving traded when he refused to, to sign the extension. That's what he did. He got Kyrie Irving traded when he alienated Kyrie, when he pissed Kyrie off to the point where Kyrie could no longer stand being around him. So, yes, he did get Kyrie Irving traded. Uh, when he heard about the deal that would have brought Eric Bledsoe and Paul George to the team, and he was ready to green light it, and then Dan Gilbert said, yeah, well, green light it when you sign the extension, and he said no, and that was the reason why it didn't happen. It wasn't that, no, I don't want to lose Kyrie. Yes, he got Kyrie traded. All right? So he was directly involved with that. He has to deal with the repercussions of that. And he Wait, didn't get, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't he push the Tristan way. Thompson into the Kardashian curse. Yeah, and he's talking about, he brought in all these old players that can't play defense. He's one of the old guys that can't play defense. He didn't get involved with any of this stuff. He's saying all the right things publicly. I'm not going to let my teammates down. I'm here for another three months. That's it. Wait, wait, go back, go back, go back, through, that, go back through the list of guys, okay? Kyrie Irving left because he'd had enough. No, Dan like, Gilbert no, traded no, no, him. No, because he'd had enough. And LeBron was the one who wanted them to go out and get Chris Paul. Kyrie Irving got wind of it after they won a championship. I mean, He's like, like I've had enough. And I forgot about that, yes. Yes, LeBron was trying to get him traded for, for Chris Paul. But you know what? <laughs> I said that in a video months and months ago when that rumor first came down. When LeBron was, th was talking about, and this is last season, near the end of last season's regular season, when LeBron was talking about how we need another ball handler, it was obvious what he was talking about. He was talking about getting rid of Kyrie. Because the, you know, the, the word around the campfire was that Chris Paul was unhappy with the Clippers last year. And LeBron knew about it, and he wanted to get Chris Paul. That was obvious to me. I, I, I don't even have any connections in the NBA. I just go by what I see. And just by reading people. And that's normally enough for me. And I was able to figure it out. And then Rob Parker eventually confirmed it after the finals. So of course that pissed off Kyrie as it should. Like I'm the reason why you won the 2016 finals. And you're trying to get me traded for this dude Chris Paul. A guy who can't even keep his composure. And Chris Paul wouldn't have matched up well with LeBron anyway. They wouldn't have been a good match. Wait, hold on. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Right? Tristan Thompson who's his rep? Rich, yeah. Rich Paul, why was that deal done? It, he why got was him a championship. Smith, uh, he got him done? a championship. Okay. So this and, whole... and Colin, to say like LeBron came back and it didn't work, he won a title. He brought the city of Cleveland joy that the city hasn't felt in decades. And now they're going to feel really... more pain for decades. They're not. They're the they... realistic, Doug. Jason, this is I'd about... rather have the Nets pick if I'm a Cavs fan. They're all saying that. Who's their coach? Tyron Lue. Who was he handpicked by? LeBron. And he won't let him coach. Did they not win a title? That's why he handpicked him, Doug. <laughs> Doug Gottlieb. He picked Tyron Lue because he knew that Tyron Lue was, was going to be a guy that he could check if he wanted to. He, he knew that he was going to be a coach who knew how to run the LeBron James system, which is basically just an AAU system, borderline playground system that LeBron runs out there where he gets to act like he's Magic Johnson. And LeBron is a great passer. He probably can be the best passer in the NBA, even though... He's not really, he does not really have conventional point guard skills because he won't allow himself to be traded. I mean, pardon me, he won't allow himself to be coached. He won't allow himself to be traded either. <laughs> but uh, Tyron was definitely handpicked by LeBron. But Tyron Lue has a backbone that I think LeBron underestimated. We got to go, but y'all did help me come up with a new nickname for LeBron. What? T.O. with titles. Mm. Coming up. That's not a bad one right there. <laughs> You call him Terrell always with titles. But anyway, we'll see how this goes with LeBron. <laughs> LeBron is like the the, uh, the Susan Lucci of the NBA, you know. He's like a big, a, a big drama queen. Peace.